another important application of calculus is optimization, and this is just an application of finding local extrema. I guess in this case, technically, we're talking about what we would call global extrema or absolute extrema, um, and these are are just the highest max, like the maximum maximum or the minimum minimum. Um, and we're going to start out by looking at these in just one function and one variable, and this way they look very similar to what we saw when we first talked about finding the max or minimum of, of a function. And because these things, these optimization problems have a lot of application uh, in business modeling and just modeling in general, but I want to talk about profit first. And profit is the difference between revenue and cost or expense. So the total amount that you make from sales, which is revenue, and the total that it's going to cost you to, pro to produce your object. So in other words, we can express this mathematically as revenue R minus cost C. And that's what we see here. So the cost of producing is, um, a particular item in this example is given by this equation. And the revenue model for the, uh, for the item is given by this equation. And in this case, x is the quantity produced. We want to determine the number of items that should be produced in order to maximize profit and also find the maximum profit. So number of items to maximize profit and the maximum profit itself. And you might be looking at me going, well, you just said one function, and there are two functions. Well, we're trying to make one function, right? And we have one function when we have to consider profit, which is what we were asked to do, right? Because I want to deal with profit, so I should find the profit function. And that's what I'm going to do here. So 1700 minus 7x squared minus 16,000 plus 500x minus 1.6x squared. So if I go through and simplify this whole thing, I'm going to have negative 0.004x cubed plus 1 point, nope, uh, minus 5.4x squared minus, sorry, plus 1200x minus 16,000. So here is my profit function. And when we learned about finding the max and min, we talked about finding the critical points. And in order to do that, we derive and we set it equal to zero. And then we solve for x. So let's, let's do that here. I'm going to derive. 2x squared. I'm going to set it equal and I'm going to solve. And I can solve by any method. If you want to use the quadratic formula, go for it. If you want to graph it, go for it. Um, if you're familiar with the polynomial equation solver on your calculator, by all means go for it because that's probably your fastest method. Um, that's what I had done beforehand and I get two zeros. I got negative 1000 and I get 100. Great, these are my critical points. These are the max or the min of the function. Well, one of them doesn't make sense in context, right? I need to produce items, and it doesn't make a lot of sense to produce negative items. So we're just going to ignore my negative 1,000 here. Right, this is illogical in terms of like what we would call maybe like a logical domain, right? We can't look at the whole domain of the function because not all x values make sense, and that would be a case here. So x equals 100 seems to be my best bet, right? If I think about maybe some trivial cases just really quick, some kind of potential cases I might have but don't really make sense here, theoretically, I guess x equals 0 could be something I'd want to consider, but it doesn't also make sense because then my profit would be negative 16,000 and that's clearly not what I, want to, what I want if I'm trying to maximize my profit. So this seems to be my optimum production. All right? If I want to maximize my profits, I should sell 100 units. How much do I make in profit if I sell 100 units? Well, 
I'm going to go back to my original profit equation. I'm going to go back up here. And when I do that, let's say I've done this earlier to save ourselves some time, I get a profit of $46,000. This is kind of a good example of make sure you're answering the whole question because I don't just want kind of my optimum case, I want the maximum profit too. So this here would be your final answer, right? Where I'm stating the maximum, or sorry, the best number of items to produce, but I'm also stating what my maximum profit is. So making sure I'm answering the whole question. Let's look at a couple examples in two variables now. And ultimately the process will be the same, but let's talk about what we're gonna deal with here. I have two functions, I will have two functions. One is the function I'm trying to optimize, the function we want to optimize, and the other we're gonna call the constraint. It's the thing that's gonna limit our domain, limit our values in the middle of the problem. It's the thing that's gonna make this problem realistic. So here's one of the classic examples. A farmer has 2,400 feet of fencing and wants to fence off a rectangular field. And that rectangular field borders a straight river. He needs no fence along that river. What are the dimensions of the field with the largest area? So again, let's go through our process from the related rates section. What am I given? I'm told that we have 2,400 feet of fencing and I want to make a rectangular enclosure. With a river on one side. So I need no fence. My goal is to maximize the area. Let's just start with a picture because um, that might help us figure out what equations we need to introduce, right? My job here is to actually introduce the two equations that I need. So here is here is my river. It's, it is not a straight river, but that is okay. Most rivers are not. Here are, here is my fence. Maybe. Here is my fence. Well, let's see what I have here. I've got two vertical segments and I have one horizontal segment. And I have 2,400 feet of fencing to use for that segment, for those segments, right? So X plus two Y equals 2,400, right? We're gonna assume that in order to maximize my area, I should probably use all of the fence. Um, so the perimeter of my fence is 2,400 feet. I have a rectangular enclosure, and I want to maximize my area. So my area function is given by just x times y. And there we have it, right? Two equations in two variables. Here's the big step. We're going to use the constraint. You can always tell what the constraint is because it is equal to a constant. So here's my constraint to um, rewrite the other function in one variable. And then we're going to proceed like normal. So if I have x plus 2y equals 2400, then I can rewrite that to say x equals 2400 minus 2y, which I can then substitute into my area function, 2400 minus 2y times y. So that gives me an area function in terms of y as 2400, whoops, 2400 y minus 2y squared. And now I have an equation in one variable and I can proceed like normal. So we're gonna derive the 
set equal to zero, I'm gonna get y equals 600. So here's one part of my dimension. I want dimensions, so I need x and y. So here's y, how do I find x? Well, I'm just gonna go back to my rearranged constraint, 2400 minus two times 600, and I get 1200. So this tells me that my optimum dimensions are 1,200 feet by 600 feet. There's my final answer. And I suppose, yeah, you could consider trivial cases, but they don't make sense here, right? One of the trivial um, cases would be a fence with zero vertical length and all horizontal length, which makes no sense, and a fence with zero horizontal length in all vertical length, which also makes no sense. So the trivial cases don't really seem to matter. Um, I'm mentioning them because sometimes professors and teachers will bring them up and you should test them, but realistically, I've never seen them matter. Um, so here are my optimum dimensions. I want to take a look at one more problem with this. A cylindrical can is to be made to hold one liter, which is the same as 1,000 cubic centimeters, that's going to be important later, of oil. Find the dimensions, so the radius and the height, that will minimize the cost of the metal to manufacture the can. And you might be thinking, what? Well, let's draw a picture first. Um, we have a cylindrical can. and it is made to hold 1,000 cubic uh, meters, centimeters of oil. So I'm making this switch because eventually we're gonna talk about radius and height, and those need to be expressed in centimeters, which I can't do with liters. So this is actually the accepted conversion. Well, if it's holding that amount of oil, that is a volume, right? So this can has a volume of 1,000 cubic centimeters, and we know that the volume of a cylinder is given by pi r squared height. I want to find the dimension, so I want to find the radius, and I want to find the height. That will minimize the cost of the metal to manufacture the can. So if I think about making a, an aluminum can. Um, if it's costing me money to produce, to, to get the metal to make the can, that we're talking about the surface area. So this all refers to surface area, right? The less stuff I use to make the can, the less surface area I have. Um, it's a very weird way to word it, but you want to be on the lookout for that because that's how they get you. That's how they confuse you. Um, so one thing I need to talk about is the surface area, which is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r height. And this is the thing I'm trying to minimize. So here's my constraint. And my constraint is that, oops, let's use the pointer. Volume has to be 1,000 cubic centimeters. And here is my surface area. So we're going to do what we've done before. Let's use the surface, sorry, the constraint to make a substitution. And it's going to get a little ugly. Um, I think the simplest thing to do is to solve for h instead of trying to deal with some of those squares. And now we can make a substitution. So 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r that. If I do some simplification, I'm gonna get, let's see, 2000 over R. Or maybe we prefer to deal with that, since we're doing calculus, is 2000 R to the negative one. Well, here's my one equation. Business as usual, derive and set equal to zero, four pi R, minus 2000 R to the negative two equal to zero. 
let's turn this back into a fraction because we're dealing with algebra. So um, fractions are generally easier and we'll solve. We'll move this over to one side. Let's get that R squared up here. I'm gonna get R cubed equal to about 159.1549. Which, when I take the cube root of that, gives me a radius of approximately 5.42 centimeters. Um, three significant figures, of course, for IB. And if that's the case, then I'm going to go ahead and use my constraint to find the height. Because, again, my original problem asked me to find the radius and the height. So when I plug in that, monstrosity into my calculator, I get approximately 10.8 centimeters. And that's all it is. It's just a process of, at this point, just making sure you're answering everything you're being asked. Um, but it is, it is hard to get going at first. This tends to be the most challenging um, topic in calculus. At least in my opinion, this is the section that even kind of messed me up when I was first learning it. Um, and it's definitely the section that I see the most trouble with because it is hard to keep everything straight and everything organized. You have to be meticulous about your organization in this section, in, this, in these problems, because it's going to make your life a lot easier. It's going to make it a lot clearer to see what's going on if you can keep everything organized.